You see, God was not concerned with trying to make any race superior to another. Our faith as a people has insulated us from the thought of taking one's life as a result of not being able to cope with one's emotional pain. Black supremacy is just as rotten as white supremacy. Our forefathers were the worst people in the history of mankind. The things that they did. In 2022, 69% of the people who died by suicide were white males. Please explain why white male suicides are skyrocketing, skyrocketing and no one is talking about it. Great question. I learned while studying psychology in graduate school that white men have consistently had the highest rate of suicide in this country. Middle-aged, rich white men lead the country in suicide. Elderly black women are the lowest risk for suicide. I would argue because of their spiritual foundation. Black people are a spiritual people. Black women are the epitome of spirituality because she's the first human being that God created to send life through. So I believe it is our spirituality, despite slavery, despite reconstruction, despite Willie Lynch, despite Jim Crow, despite civil rights, despite black power, despite the crack, despite the Obama neglect, despite the Joe Biden hypocrisy. Despite feminism, which begets high divorce rate of 80 percent, child support, alimony, despite the prison industrial complex, Planned Parenthood, the occult, our people still don't kill each other nearly as much as so-called white people. Despite black on black crime, it's called Genesis 25-23. One nation will be stronger than the other. Our faith as a people has insulated us from the thought of taking one's life as a result of not being able to cope with one's emotional pain. No disrespect to the European community. They can be religious too, but they do not have the spiritual strength or foundation of the original man in the original woman. I think Europeans are at a significant disadvantage when it comes to establishing a relationship with supreme consciousness because number one, their culture is not rooted in connection with God. They come from a very objective, a very Eurocentric scientific approach to reality that says if I can't see it, if I can't measure it, if I can't manipulate it, if I can't control it, it must not exist. Exactly. Their culture is not rooted in the veneration, obeisance, or fear of the Most High God. And the scriptures state that without faith, it's impossible to please God. I mean, look at this. It took Umar Johnson, who was not even a part of the faith, to express the magnitude of the spiritual disadvantage the dominant society has been plagued with ever since Esau whom Hebrews 12, 16 describes as a profane, godless person. Okay, so this is who their forefather is because he sold his birthright for a morsel of food. Now, remember the Abrahamic covenant was due to Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But Esau only assesses the value of something by tangibles and measurements. So the blessing from Isaac that Esau shall dwell in the fatness of the land and he shall live by the sword. This blessing that Isaac gave Esau in Genesis chapter 27, 39 through 40, this came at the expense of the Edomites being separated from the Most High God for nearly 4,000 years. I mean, think about that. It would take them getting grafted in for them to have a shot at salvation and being redeemed and having a relationship with the Most High.
But meanwhile, so-called black supremacy was regulated by the Most High himself uh, through his black servant Moses. Okay, Moses wrote 600 plus laws for the Israelites. Okay, and they had to live at a high degree of righteousness in the presence of Yah or be killed on sight either by stoning the death or consumed in God's fire. Okay? Esau has never reigned under such righteousness. In fact, he's went out of his way to shake his fist at the Most High during his present rule. Okay? All these abominations come from Esau. Okay? So if we look at white psychology, white psychology doesn't even admit the existence of spirit. Now, how is it that in the first one of the first pages of the diagnostic manual of all psychologists state we have never cured anybody? You don't get cured in psychology. You get medicated and managed. To learn how to live with demons. Sigmund Freud, although the father of European psychology, he came the closest to establishing the belief that there is a spirit that dwells within the man. But he was rejected when the behavioral revolution came and they said that he was basically a heretic for dealing in concepts that had no scientific basis. So white psychology doesn't admit the existence of spirit. So here's the question. If a white man is suicidal. And white psychology doesn't admit the existence of spirit when he goes for treatment to deal with a suicide. And if there is, in fact, a soul within us, how is he ever going to overcome the emotional pain that he's suffering from? If the therapist working with him won't even admit that there's something greater that is motivating his life from within him. Hello. Now, this is how white supremacy is far worse than the law of Moses which was black supremacy at its peak. And more importantly, it impacts the salvation of the dominant society moving forward. Okay, they trust in science, the so-called medical experts, they, they need documentation. Okay, Christ not, he not only demands you to have blind faith in him, but he says, go sell everything you own and give it to the poor. OK, and again, pastors like Geno Jennings are supposed to preach harsher to the dominant society because they are the ruling race of people whom Christ will destroy when he returns. You see that? And they have more to lose when Christ returns. And we've already established that faith in Yah is not a part of Esau's identity or culture. So how, how, how will he respond when the recompense of Ezekiel chapter 25, Ob Obadiah chapter 1, verse 2 through 10, how will he respond when that comes to pass? Okay, he already has a faith deficit and, and they owe reparations. So when our people were kings, we didn't owe any nation of people this enormous amount of debt, okay, that the Most High honors and he, the Most High will redeem and force them to be recompensed according to bloodshed. Our people didn't owe this type of debt. Uh, the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 12, says, Woe to him who builds a city or town with blood and establish it by iniquity, okay? But he's talking about slavery. He's supposed to teach that sin is incredibly expensive, okay? That's what pastors are supposed to teach. If he gets treatment for suicide, and it's a demon oppressing him, how does he use spiritual warfare against something he was raised to believe does not exist? And his pastor Never taught them this. That's something seminary school cannot teach you. With black people, when we go to therapy, we tell the therapist 
we have a spirit. It ain't a question to be debated. We have a spirit. So therapy is about reconnecting you to that essence. White psychology don't even admit it exists. So if you're a white person suffering trauma and you haven't grew up in a home or a community with a strong religious or spiritual basis, what intervention can be had for that type of person to stop them from committing the ultimate mistake? I believe it is the materialistic nature of European society, the anti-spiritual nature of European society, the narcissistic nature of European society that measures success by material growth that has all these white men and girls judging their life's success based on what they own and what they own. That is a recipe for death and destruction. Luke chapter 21 verse 26 states that men's heart will fail them. Revelation chapter 18, 17 says in one hour, catch this, in one hour, all their riches came to nothing. Yes, it's a recipe for death and destruction. In Ecclesiastes, Solomon described in, in, in a nutshell, perishable riches as an evil affliction. Okay, it's an evil affliction for a man to have so much wealth in this lifetime, but his life is only a vapor. And when he dies, even if he leaves it to his son, that man will never get to enjoy most of what he had. Solomon said that's an evil affliction. The book of Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 1 through 4, it says, Woe to the day, in a nutshell, woe to the day, the time of the Gentiles, the sword shall come upon Egypt, shall take away her wealth. It's not talking about, it's talking about spiritual Egypt. Okay? This nation that represents and it operates in the same spirit as Egypt. Take away her, Egypt's wealth, and her foundations are broken. You see that? So, white supremacy has more to lose when our Lord returns. Okay, and like I said, they already have a 4,000 year faith deficit. Okay, you are who your father was. Okay, the sins of the father passed down to the third and fourth generation. Then those generations just continue to cycle. You see that? So, now, this does not mean Negroes are immune to judgment now. I want to make that clear because many of our people have long since abandoned the faith and adopted this Gentile mind and spirit, and they still have melanated skin, but a Gentile mind and spirit, and vice versa. Okay, there are righteous Caucasians whom have been born again. They've been redeemed by Christ, by Christ's Holy Spirit. Now, this doesn't mean they won't have to be servants and handmaidens in the next kingdom. I want to make that clear because you left a major debt unpaid. This is the problem. The pastors are not teaching how the sin debt will be settled. So even if that white person make their bed in hell, the children going to have to pay for it through slavery. That's what the Bible says. I'm glad you spoke about materialism because my follow up question to that was, is that I believe white men struggle because the subsidies their forefathers received, specifically the GI Bill mm -hmm. and even the increase in homes and even nepotism to a certain extent, because I think ne nepotism has declined tremendously in America because everything is short term. Everything is moving around so much. You're not going to be at a job for 30 years. I think because of those factors, they're not living up to the standard in their family and they can't deal with it. Mm, that's a great point. Three things come to mind with your comment. Number one, is there an ancestral curse against Europeans in America? I've said many times that there is no such thing as all sin is the same, including white supremacy to black. There is a greater infinite penalty for he who gains riches, not by right. 
Okay, that's according to Jeremiah 17, 11. It says it will leave him in the midst of his days. And at his end, he will be a fool. Okay. The, the first man described in hell was a rich man. Okay, James 5, verse 1 through 6. It, it even gives a detailed account for the fate of white supremacists and their descendants. Okay, in so many words. So James chapter 5, starting at verse 1. It says, Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, verse 4, indeed, the wages of the laborers who mold your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just, and he does not resist you. Okay? So that's all I have. Ask your pastor why he never preached this. Go on and send Gino Jennings a message and ask him why he never preached this. Okay? Don't let your flesh write checks that your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about fates and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.